My greetings and welcome to um, NDSU, the new graduate students. To introduce myself, I am Dr. Sheila Ramamurthy. Um, I'm an assistant professor at the Veterinary and Microbiological Sciences Department. I basically teach undergraduate and graduate level classes, and um, I also mentor several international students, which is why I got this invitation to speak to you today. So this was a long time back, but I well remember how I felt when I had to board that plane for the first time and you know, leave the country, go to a completely new country and start a graduate program there. So there is a lot of excitement and I know there is also some amount of trepidation. It's been a very long time since I took classes, but what I remember was that uh, I'm from India basically, so we would have to uh, go into the lecture room and then we take down notes while the person, you know, the lecturer is talking. And then at the end of the semester, we have this one big exam, which you either pass or fail to finish up with the class. And when I came to the US, what I found very dis different in classrooms here, there were two things, the way the class was structured and the interaction with the teacher them, himself or herself. Here you will find that there is a lot more interaction between the student and the lecturer. And it's basically welcomed and you find that classrooms are very interactive. I mean, a lot of lecturers here, I think, um, welcome the interaction, basically. We have office hours, and we uh, like it when students ask questions in the class, when they participate in the class. And in fact, several classes will have participation points. So that was my other thing. So make sure you understand the syllabus, make sure you have it, and that you completely uh, are clear about what the expectations for your class is. And rather than having one huge exam, you may be expected to take several quizzes, you may have assignments, and then you may have exams as well. So it is a task to balance all of these um, different things when you're taking a class. And my suggestion to students is to keep a calendar. So basically, make sure you have your deadlines there and your tasks for your class. And some people like to have, um, I mean, like you to call them by their first name. There are others who, maybe prefer to be called Dr. So-and-so. If you have a question, just ask. Uh, you would be surprised to know how many times people have questions and they don't ask. And NDSU, we have a very um, diverse and vibrant graduate community. You get a lot of help from your peer graduate students. Your academic advisor would be a very great resource for you, and also your international advisor. What is the one thing that you should not do to be, to be unsuccessful or to be successful in the class? Just make sure you understand what the expectations are as far as the code of conduct and uh, academic integrity goes. Because there are some countries where it's not a big deal for uh, students to have assignments where they can copy some amount of material from the internet or maybe cite, um, I mean, not, ex not exactly cite, but reproduce something that somebody else has said, but not give them appropriate credit. So here that would be considered plagiarism. So as long as you stay away from anything that can compromise your integrity, you should be completely fine as far as your classroom goes. My one other advice, if there are certain areas where you feel you're not comfortable, um, you know, taking advanced level classes for a graduate student, Unless it's mandatory or it's required for your research, talk to your advisor and try to take them in the second semester instead of the first. So that way you have time to settle down and then you know you get into the system and you learn how it works and then you will be more comfortable taking the difficult class the next time around. That being said about classrooms, to go on to the research aspect of your um, program. So the major difference between classroom um, instruction and research is that research is completely self-motivated. In a classroom, you pretty much know that you have to be there at a certain time, you take exams at a certain time, and the expectations are mostly laid out in the syllabus. It would also help if you know exactly what your expectations for your research project is. And the best way to do this, again, ask. So if I had a student who came up to me within the first week of their arrival and then said, can we have a meeting and can we talk about my research project? That would thrill me no end. So just make sure uh, you, know that, you know that you have to do it and most likely your research advisor will 
be on top of things and tell you what you have to do. But they always appreciate the initiative. And like I said, research is self-motivated. Um, sometimes students from other countries think satisfying expectations is basically following instructions. But for research, it's quite the opposite. You will be expected to um, come up with, you know, take initiative and uh, basically move your own projects forward. And that's a mindset that may be completely um, different for somebody from another country. And uh, besides that, again, for your research, just make sure you understand the expectations from day one and don't wait until your second or third year before you try to get your project together and um, try to acquire the skills. Because there are uh, two components, basically, having the skills to do the work and making sure you have the resources to acquire the skills. And your research mentor should be able to help you with both of these as soon as you start the program. And those were about all the words of wisdom I have. <laughs> And if you have any questions, you can find information about me on the website. My name you can see um, below my face on this video. And feel free to email me um, if you have any questions, and so also with your, with your advisors, your international advisors, I mean.